Lord can Jesus do what she wants to do. Amen. Amen. It's so wonderful to be with you tonight. Then on that day, Dinya Mashia, I jammed. These next three days. Are you excited for a God encounter? Amen. Amen. Do you believe God is going to meet you? Amen. 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 Oh, I can feel your hunger. Amen. And I know God will meet your hunger. He's going to meet with every single one of you. I have so much anticipation in my bones. In my spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm so honored and excited to be with you. Amen. My, Amen. Hus my husband Jeremy and I, Jeremy, we, we were here in Yangon four and a half years ago. And we love this place. Amen. Amen. Was there anyone in here in those meetings four and a half years ago? Anybody? 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 <laughs> Hundreds of miracles. Many stage four cancers healed. Many doctor verified cancers healed. Even the paramedics brought people in off the ambulance. No, 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 Accepted for their miracles. Many notable miracles. And I know that God is going to meet with you. Every single one of you. Thank you for your we love you. Beautiful Burmese people. Our brothers and sisters. Amen. Now listen, I believe God wants to mark you with power tonight. Amen. He wants to come in his power. He wants to come in his power. And today when I arrived in Yangon, after I checked into the hotel, I looked out the window, and all of a sudden, it started to rain. And I Because I knew it was a sign of God's outpouring. Amen. 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 And in this nation, God wants to pour out blessing. And He wants to pour out miracles. Amen. 
Oh, he wants to pour out his favor. You see, everywhere in the Bible, where it speaks of the rain, do you know it speaks of the rain for the harvest? Even in Deuteronomy, amen. In Deuteronomy, it speaks of God pouring out rain for the harvest. And I believe that it's a sign that God wants to pour out harvest in this season. And even these next few days. And the lightning was flashing today. And the thunder was booming. And in Habakkuk 3 verse 4 it says there are rays flashing from his hand and there is the hiding of his power amen amen, amen. that's the bible Habakkuk 3 verse 4 that rays Bright light flashes from his hand. The lightnings of God. And there is the hiding of his power. And I believe God wants to pour out his power over you, over this city, over this nation. Amen. And we're going to dive right in. Can you lift your hands to heaven? So God, we love you. Oh, we love your presence. And we honor you in this place tonight, Jesus. We declare there's no name greater. There's no name higher. There's no one greater than Jesus Christ. Oh, we declare your lordship. And we declare your kingship. Oh, we declare the authority of Jesus Christ in this place. We declare the kingship and authority of Jesus Christ over the city. And over this nation. And we declare that every other name, every other God would bow to the name of Jesus. That Jesus, you would receive the rightful reward of your suffering. The price that you paid on the cross. Oh Jesus, that you would receive your harvest. Here in Myanmar. In this season. So tonight, Lord. And over the next few days. We declare a glory zone. A zone free of every evil spirit. An atmosphere free of witchcraft. An atmosphere totally surrendered to Jesus Christ. That Jesus would get all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus Christ. 
Do you believe in his authority? 예수의 그 안하고 용지 받으라. There's no name greater. 아니 나마테 진멸의 나마 미시. There's no name higher. 두에 나마테 진멸의 나마 미시. There's no one perfect. No one holy. But Jesus Christ. Oh, and He came to set you free. He came to save you. From sin and sickness and disease. Oh, and He wants to write His name upon your heart. And so tonight, we're going to talk about the power and authority of Jesus Christ. And we're going to give you an opportunity to receive that power and authority in your life. And we're going to pray, and Jesus is going to release miracles in this place. Because this is what Jesus does. Amen. 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 So the Bible says in Acts 10:38. It says, "You know Jesus of Nazareth." How God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. That's Acts 10.38. See, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. God was with him. And God anointed him. So he went about doing good. All. Say all. Healing all who were oppressed to the devil. Come on, God, He is up to healing all. And Jesus is up to doing good. And he wants to do good in your life. And he wants to do good through your life. See, Jesus isn't just a dry story. The Bible isn't just a history lesson. It's not a storybook or something of fiction. The Bible is the word of God. It's the written word that's truth. In fact, it's the one true word that we can read, meditate on here and believe because it's practical and applicable for our lives today. See, Romans says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got to know the word of God and that's the written word of God and it's the spoken
spoken word of God. Because God wants us to hear his voice. John 10:27. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. See, God wants you to hear his voice. Jesus isn't a man that just lived and died a long time ago. Jesus is the very son of God. He was perfectly man. And perfectly God. And he lived a perfect life. Tempted in everything. But without flaw. Without sin, the only one to walk with no sin. Though he was tempted in everything, just like you and I. But without sin, he died. He cru- he was crucified on a cross. Died a brutal death. Not because of anything he did, but because he chose love. See, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. And Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. But he came to save the world. And he came to save you. But not only to save you, he came to give you a living relationship. I know most of you are born again. But maybe not all of you. And definitely not all of you understand the significance of what is at hand. See, Jesus didn't just die on a cross to take away our sin. Though he did that, he was the perfect sacrifice. That willingly took our sin. Willingly died on a cross. So that all sin, sickness, and disease, every bit of torment, shame, and fear, could be nailed to the cross to be gone once and for all. Tower up. That for every single one of us that would give our sin to him would ask for his forgiveness and receive him in our hearts we become born again Children of God. The Bible says that we become heirs to God. Heirs to, to the things of Christ. Fellow heirs with Christ. See, this is the price Jesus paid. So that God could have a family with many sons and daughters. See, God calls us that believe children of God 
co-heirs with Christ. Partakers of the kingdom. Partakers of the divine nature. And in that, we get to obtain the kingdom of God. See, Jesus didn't just stay on a cross. He rose again from the dead. On the third day, he was resurrected. Came back to life. Appeared to many. Walking around on the earth. After he'd already died a brutal death. Rose from the dead. And then he ascended into heaven. And when he ascended into heaven, just days later, he sent his Holy Spirit for all that would receive. And Jesus himself said in Acts 1.8 in Acts 1.8 before he ascended into heaven he said but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And see, God's full intent of sending his son Jesus to the earth to die and raise again from the dead was number one so that we could be reconciled to God and number two so we could receive his Holy Spirit and walk out in the power of God as his witnesses but you see to walk out in the power of God he wants you to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be so full of the Holy Spirit that you look like a different person. Amen. Amen. See, when I was a child, I received Jesus in my heart. I went to church with my parents. I read the Bible. And it was good. And, you know, God, according to the word of God, I was in right standing with God. Because Jesus lived in my heart. I'd asked him for forgiveness of my sins. So he lived in my heart. But it wasn't until I was a teenager that I re realized I was missing something. See, I'd received Jesus in my heart. But I had not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, and the Bible is very clear. If you read all through the New Testament, and specifically through the book of Acts, it's very, very clear that we must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you become anointed with power. You become anointed to do the works of Christ. 
Do you know Jesus said this? In John 14 verse 12 He said these works and greater you will do because I go to the Father. Now, if you have read the Bible, you know that Jesus did a lot of great works. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus cleansed the leper. Jesus cast out demons. Jesus healed all kinds of sickness and disease. And yet Jesus still said, these works and greater you'll do because I go to the Father. See, why did he say that? He said because when he goes to the Father, he would send his Holy Spirit. And if his Holy Spirit would be sent on the earth, then it wouldn't just be one or two that could would be walking with Jesus. It wouldn't just be one or two that maybe had a special touch from God and could see miracles. That's how it was in the old Testament. There were men and women of God in the Old Testament that the Spirit of God would come on and they did incredible works. Even raising of the dead. Elijah raised the dead. Elisha raised the dead. Me Moses moved in powerful miracle signs and wonders. But see, God didn't want it to just be on one or two. He wanted all people to walk in power. He wants all of his people to walk out in the power and authority of God. See, Psalms 110 verse 3 says that in the day of your power your people will freely volunteer speaking of God in the day of your power your people will freely volunteer See, in the day of God's power, when God is moving in signs and wonders and miracles, God's people should be the first to say, Here am I. God, anoint me. Use me for your glory. Mark me with signs and wonders. See, God wants to use you. The reason why he, Jesus died, rose again, and ascended into heaven was, yes, to save you, to reconcile us to God, but it was also for this thing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you read in verse, let's, we're going to do this backwards. We're going to read verse 21, and then we're going to read verse 20. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. So that we might become the, the righteousness of God in Him. See, that speaking of the cross, Jesus knew no sin. We spoke of this already. He was perfect in every way. 
Yet he became sin on our behalf. Meaning on the cross. He took on all the sin. Of the past, present and future. So that we could be saved and right with God. So we could become the righteousness of God in Christ. But that's just part one of the gospel. Part two is verse 20. This is therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. See, this this scripture says that we're ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us. But see, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who's sent with the same authority. As the one who sent him. In the natural, if a king sends an ambassador to release a decree, that ambassador, whatever he says or signs, it's done. Because it came from the word of the king. The king released his authority over his ambassador. Well, do you realize Jesus is the king of kings? Amen. Amen. So we're ambassadors for Christ. And everything that Jesus did. Everything that Jesus said and everything Jesus commanded and commissioned us to do He puts that authority behind us and upon us. So Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 in verse 7 and 8, and shima, so the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Freely you receive, so freely give. Now Jesus was commissioning the disciples, his followers. And he's commissioning you today to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to cleanse the leper. Because if you've received Jesus Christ and you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, that means you have the seal of God upon your life. And amen. And just like Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed to the devil setting them free because God was with him because he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power then God wants to do the same through you Amen Amen See, the power of God is upon those who believe. In, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, 
It says the people who know their God. Will do great exploit. They'll be strong and do great exploit. See what do great exploits look like? It's the power of God. The people that know their God. They'll be strong and mighty. They'll do great exploits. They'll demonstrate the power of God. To show God strong. See, God wants to look strong and mighty as he should. In your nation, in your city, in your family, in your region, in your workplace, he wants, he wants the power, his power, to be made manifest. And there's times he will sovereignly come just so people get a revelation of who he is. But the reason he sent his Holy Spirit was so that you could, like Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses. See, the purpose of the power of God is so that you would be witnesses for God. So that you would reconcile people to God through Jesus Christ. He wants to mark you with the power. He wants to mark you with authority. See, in a world where there are false demonstrations of power, where the witches are doing powerful things, where people are doing signs and wonders, and it's the dark kind. It's only a mockery and a mimic of what God can do. See, everything the devil does is a counterfeit of what God does. Even in the days of Moses, they encountered this. See, God manifested himself to Moses uh, when all of God's people were in bondage and slavery. And God appeared to Moses who you have to remember he was a murderer. He had just killed people in Egypt. And he was running from his identity. But God met him in Exodus chapter 3. God met him and challenged him and called him. All it took was Moses turning aside. And acknowledging the bush that was on fire. And recognizing when God spoke to him. And from that point, God began to manifest his power to Moses. He said, Moses, what's that in your hands? It's a staff. Throw it on the ground, Moses. He threw it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And then God said, pick it back up. He picks it back up by the tail. And it becomes a staff again in his hand. 
God says, Moses, put your hand in your cloak. He puts his hand in his cloak and removes it. And when he takes his hand out, it's leprous. And God says, put your hand back in. And take it back out. And it was clean, perfectly clean. And God did signs and wonders to demonstrate his power to Moses. Now you got to remember that when Moses comes before Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 7 Moses and his brother Aaron come before Pharaoh and Aaron throws down the staff and God does a work of power. The, the rod becomes a, a serpent again. Do you remember the story? Then the sorcerers come out, Pharaoh's magicians. And what, what do they do? The same thing. There was power and there was power. See, in the world today, there's dark power. But we know the story. Because what happens? The rod of Aaron, the one that become, became the serpent, it swallowed up all the sorcerers' serpents. Stats. And it was Moses and Aaron left standing. See, that's called authority. See, God wants to anoint you with power and authority. That, that you would demonstrate the power of God and the authority of God. See, it's the authority of God that swallows up the works of darkness. And God has given you both. In the Great Commission in Matthew 28, ver verses 18 to 20, again, just before Jesus ascends into heaven, he says to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you for I am with you always even to the end of the earth. See, Jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority. But he said, therefore go. See, he sends his disciples with the same authority as he was given. All authority. In Matthew 16, it says, I've given you Jesus and I've given you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In Matthew 16, 19. See, he's given you not only power to do miracles, but because of the Holy Spirit, he's anointed you with, with power 
to go on a big day day you receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you when you know what the yare got to go with the yala but not only that he commissioned you with authority dad in the god they will then go acquit and on it to say lude to bind up the works of darkness now so you know you're all on which people boy and do it the things of the kingdom pay out the nine and go pseal up boy and do it whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, this is what God has commissioned you with. To do miracles. To walk in signs and wonders. And to bind up the devil everywhere you go. See, we don't focus on the devil. We don't worship the devil. We're not afraid of the devil. Because we understand the devil's under our feet. We are, amen. Amen. We understand that every work of darkness is under the feet of Jesus and we are the body. You can read this in Ephesians 1 verses 18 to to 22 at 23 that every power and principality every form of darkness it's under the very feet of Jesus and you are are the body of Jesus Christ. He's the head, you're the body. See, we don't have to fear the works of darkness. But we need to step into our calling as children of God, co-heirs with Christ, living out the authority God commissioned us with living in the power that the Holy Spirit has given us to bind up the works of darkness and to loose the kingdom of God on the earth. I believe that God's going to release some power in this place. Amen. I believe God wants to do miracles in this place. But not only does he want to do miracles, not only does he want to bind up the works of darkness, he wants to anoint you with the Holy Spirit and power. He wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. You would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. When you know Piaga Temple Matsenda Lare Kama, when you know it, you would be filled with boldness. That you would be filled with faith. That you would walk out in raw, bold faith and the power of God. That amen. Amen. That everywhere you go, that demons are fleeing, miracles are popping, the dead are being raised. This is the inheritance and the commission that God has for you. In whatever sphere of influence you're in, whatever work you do, whether you're a pastor or a minister, you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a student, 
You're a business person. You work in the shops, in the market. In whatever you do, if you're a doctor, God wants to demonstrate His power in your life and through your life. Amen. Amen. See, these works aren't just for the minister. They're for every single person that believes that you could walk in the full inheritance that God has for the children of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I believe that God wants to release miracles in this place. Everywhere, everywhere we go. And everywhere Jesus goes. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. We've been seeing incredible miracles lately. HIV healed. We've been seeing Lyme's disease healed. Paralytics raising up off their sick beds. We were just in Malawi, Africa. And I don't even know how many blind eyes open. Countless blind eyes open. We had a hundred thousand people in the crowd one night. And every single night. Numerous blind eyes opened. Numerous deaf ears opened. Tumors dissolved. Powerful miracles. Everywhere we go, everywhere Jesus goes, miracles happen. It's not hard. It just takes a willing person to partner with him. And he wants to partner with you.